my question for you. How much time do you have? I ask this because these days so many people seem busy, as if they don't have time. And many people say they're crazy busy, as if the lack of time were making them crazy. But think about it. We have more time-saving devices than ever before. We have more time-saving devices than ever before, and here we are, so short of time. Maybe it's time for someone to say, it's not working. It's not working. This great human project to save time seems to have failed. I mean, it may even have backfired. We have an epidemic, an unprecedented epidemic, of time poverty. So here's what I want to do in this short time I have. I want to give you back time. I want to help you have the time of your life. Now, one thing you could do, I suppose, if you wanted to feel less busy, is move to a pre-industrial culture where they don't have many time-saving devices. Right? Your days would be full. I mean, you'd be hunting and chopping and sweeping and washing your clothes in the river on a rock. So your days would be full, but I don't think you'd feel busy. And I'm sure you wouldn't feel crazy. Now, why is that? It has something to do with manual labor. If, it, if the manual labor is easy, like raking leaves, you get some time to settle your mind. You can review what happened earlier in your day. You can process a difficult conversation. You can even let your mind go for a little wander. The other possibility with manual labor is that it's really difficult and requires your full attention. For example, if you're chopping wood, I mean, you have to pay attention. You have to clear your mind of everything extraneous. So either way with manual labor, your mind gets a break. You get some time to unwind your mind. And that leaves you feeling less wound up. But nowadays, what do we do with all the time we've saved thanks to having all these amazing time-saving devices? We fill that time. We make more plans. We do more work. We set more goals. We text, we tweet, we read, we socialize, we snap, we chat, we bid, we buy, we browse. I mean, boy, do we browse. We check our emails, we check the news, we check Facebook, we check our emails again, we check the news again. I mean, it's like we fill all the time we've saved, but with activities that are mentally stimulating, that keep our minds going and going and going. So these days, our minds never get a break. And I believe it's precisely because our minds never get a break that we feel busy. It's so busy in here. So I've come to the conclusion, and brace yourselves, this is a harsh conclusion. We're not crazy because we're busy. We're busy because we're crazy. <laughs> the way we're living, filling our minds all the time, is crazy. And it's making us busy. Now, by the way, this is not all the fault of email and smartphones. I think we've been evolving into this mess for a really long time. But now we seem to be at crisis point. So what can we do? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you don't want to move to a pre-industrial culture. Is there anything else we can do? Well, there is an approach, another way, and I call it taking a conscious approach to time. But that means rethinking a lot about what we think about time. Primarily, we think time is objective, a fact of nature completely external to us. So you look at your watch and you see 3 o'clock, and you assume that it refers to some real 3 o'clock hardwired in the universe, as if there were a giant clock out there keeping time. But there isn't. Most of what we believe about time has nothing, no basis in nature. Some physicists would say time isn't even real. It's an agreement. What we do know about time is that our experience of it, our lived experience of it, is deeply subjective. Right? So when you're bored or you're depressed or you're waiting, time seems to move so slowly. When you're happy or engaged, time flies. When you're very wound up, time's tight. So our experience of time is intimately related to our state of mind. Your state of mind affects the way you experience time. So this opens up an interesting possibility. Instead of focusing on what time is doing to you, focus on what you're doing to time. Instead of complaining or feeling like a victim of time, take responsibility for time. And I don't just mean how you manage time. 
Time management is great, but it's a little bit out of date. I'm talking about something else. I'm take, talking about taking responsibility for how we show up for time, for the state of mind we bring to the time we have. Are you approaching this moment contracted or expanded from fear or from love, distracted or focused? So taking a conscious approach to time means taking responsibility for the quality of attention you bring to each moment because that's what creates your experience of time. Now, once you make that kind of perceptual shift, there are many practical things you could do, many wonderful techniques that can help you expand time, play with time, find more space in time, and feel less busy. But here today, I'm give you what I think is the most essential technique. Take some time consciously each day to unwind your mind. Take some time to reduce the mental stimulation externally, but also the mental activity internally. Breath by breath by breath, bring down the volume on the chatter. Now, this is more than just taking a break. I mean, if you're stressed and you want to take a break and you lie on the couch messaging your friends and watching television, that's not what I mean. If you're at the gym on the treadmill listening to a podcast, or rehearsing your TED talk. That's not what I mean. It's even more than taking a digital detox, because that focuses on the external. That's great, but we also have to focus on the internal, what's going on in our own minds. The amazing thing is that this doesn't have to take a lot of time if you put your mind to it. You can do it in a moment. You can do it in a planned way or an unplanned way. For example, I just bought myself a new watch that I have to wind manually. So in the morning, when I'm starting to feel wound up, I wind my watch and remember, turn by turn, to unwind. You can do this on the go. Let's say you're out and you're rushing, or you notice that you're rushing, or you notice that you're saying, I don't have time. Well, stop and think for a moment. If all that busyness, or even some of that busyness, is all in your mind, then maybe taking a moment to unwind your mind is the best possible expenditure of time when you're busy. When you realize that this doesn't take much time, something extraordinary happens because all of these moments appear throughout your day. Opportunities, gaps, times between other times. When you realize if you don't compulsively reach out to fill or wind up your mind, you can do something to refresh your browser. So today, you'll notice in between TED Talks, there are breaks. Maybe you could use one or two of those to clear your mind, to open your mind to receive what's coming next. Now, this is really important. If you do manage to find a moment like that, if you do manage to find a moment where you can unwind your mind, acknowledge it. Congratulate yourself for finding the time, for taking the time, for making the time. Because it's only if we notice those moments that we start to realize, hey, I do have time. I have moments where I don't have to be doing something. I have disposable time. I have free time. Maybe I'm even becoming time rich, moment by moment. Now, I want to share one very advanced exercise with you. Whenever you realize how fortunate you are to be living in the 21st century with all these amazing time-saving devices. Take a moment to celebrate. Like, let's say you're on a plane. You know that moment when the pilot comes on and announces there's going to be a 20-minute delay? Everybody groans? Not again. All this time wasted, and I'm so busy. Well, try this reframe. Consider this. Consider how much longer the journey would have taken you by horseback and take a moment to celebrate. Celebrate how fortunate, how blessed you are to be living in a time where things take so little time. You know, in this time we're in, where things take so little time, we also have a sense that things are moving really fast. Things are changing really fast. They may be out of our control. So we micromanage time, we obsess about time. We also fear that our time may be running out 
that we're hurtling towards some very unhappy conclusion. Well, in a time like that, I think the most important thing we can do is take a little time to unwind our minds. Important for not just our sanity, but our civility, our decision-making, and maybe our survival. I mean, we'll never go back to a time, it's not possible, where we don't have a zillion things competing for our attention, winding us up. So if we're not resolute, if we don't take responsibility for our state of mind and time, I think we'll be wound up from the moment we wake up in the morning till the moment we go to sleep at night, if we go to sleep at night, day after day, year after year, everywhere we go. I mean, do we really think the next amazing time-saving device, self-driving cars or robotic vacuum cleaners or packages delivered by drone before we've even taken the time to want them, <laughs> do we really think that will give us the time we crave? I don't think so. I believe it's up to us now. We have to invest some of the time we've saved, thanks to millennia of time-saving, in the bank of well-being, or we'll never have time. There's one, one last thing. If you do take time to unwind your mind, and you do it deeply, sometimes you may touch a point, a moment, in which it seems as if time stops, as if you're beyond time. And this makes me wonder, maybe what we're craving underneath all this drive to save time is not more time or even more free time but to be free of time, to touch that moment where we feel free of time. Because from that place, from that perspective of timelessness, we can reimagine time, we can recreate time, we can change the agreement. We can see time from that place, not as a prison, not as a problem, not even as a commodity to be cut up, but as an opportunity, an opportunity to express our being. You can, you can see time as an opportunity to live out, to express, to enjoy who you really are, what you're here for, what you most want to do, consciously. And in doing this, have the time of your life. Thank you for sharing this time with me.